Hello and welcome to another mini PC review and today we're going to be looking at the Mini Air 12 Lite by Geekom which they kindly sent to me for this review and this retails at 199 US dollars so let's take a look at what you get. The model I've got here comes with 8 gigabytes of removable DDR4 RAM and 256 gigabytes of SSD storage and as far as I know this is the only configuration you can get for this specific model. As always with Geekom the unboxing experience is really quite nice and the PC itself is well protected and greets you as soon as you open the box. Under the PC you get a little thank you card from the Geekom team and under that you get an accessories package which includes a power cable. I'm in the UK so I get the standard UK plug and you get the adapter which supplies up to 65 watts of power. You also get an HDMI cable which is great because that's more than what Apple gives you with their PCs and you also get a pack of screws for the mounting plate, a set of printed instructions to get you going and finally the back plate for mounting this on the back of a monitor. Moving on to the PC itself and taking off the protective plastic, my first impression is that despite this thing being tiny and slim, it feels heavier than what I was originally expecting. It's all plastic on the exterior apart from the back plate as far as I can tell and it does actually feel really solid. It reminds me of the plastic you'd find on a PS2 if you were lucky enough to have one of those. On the front from left to right you've got the power button, two USB 3.2 Gen 1 connectors rated for 5 gigabits per second, an expansion port which we're going to talk about later, and microphone and headphone jacks. On each side you've got cooling vents with one side having a Kensington lock and on the back from left to right you've got DisplayPort 1.4, a gigabit ethernet port, two USB 2.0s for your peripherals, two USB 3.2 Gen 2s rated 10 gig each, HDMI and the DC power jack. You've also got like this little hook thing which is supposed to be for attaching a lanyard or something like that which I've never seen on a desktop PC before so that is a quirky design choice in my opinion. To take it apart you've got four screws on the back which don't come out. Thank you so much to the engineers who designed this because there is nothing more annoying than losing screws. Once you've loosened the screws, pull on one of them and the whole plate should just come right off. No ribbons to look out for and the back plate also acts as like a heat sink for your SSD, which is probably why this PC feels heavier than I was originally expecting. On the inside you've got a single stick of removable DDR4 sodium RAM that's 8GB like I said before, it's just a generic brand but it's going to get the job done. For the SSD you've got a massive heat pad on top. And as you can see, this is a SATA based M.2 drive and underneath the SSD, you've got the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth card just in case you ever wanted to swap that out. When putting it back together, watch out for the Kensington lock because it's easy to miss the hole that it goes into and then you'll end up bending the plastic around it. Now back to this expansion slot. This is a really, really cool feature, which I haven't actually seen on a mini PC before. What this essentially is, it's the front panel connector from a normal desktop motherboard. So what that means is you can attach some cables to this and then you can relocate your power button, which is really useful for DIY DIY projects such as like arcade cabinets or any scenario where the PC is hard to get to. I can genuinely see this being really useful for a lot of people. Moving on to the actual desktop experience, I tested out some YouTube at 4K and it seems to run really, really well. Um, I tested a few videos and I got about five or six drop frames, which is just at the beginning, which I kind of see with every PC to be honest. But after that, it is basically flawless. For Geekbench 6, it scored 808 on the single core and 1998 on the multi core, which is what you'd expect from this chip, to be honest. And the graphics score is 3247, which is very low in the world of desktop graphics. But remember, this is running on integrated graphics, so there is no graphics card. It's all running on the CPU. And this is not designed for games or any kind of graphically intense situation. Uh, but saying that, it can run two 4K screens at 60 Hz each, which, you know, for an office PC at $200 is great. That's great value. You. I can't really argue with that. So yeah, like I said, it's not designed for games, but I thought I'd try some anyway. And I managed to get the PS2 emulator running quite well here. So here's Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 4. I managed to get it to three times native resolution before noticing any slowdowns, but any higher than that and you will run into issues. Older PC games seem to run okay as well. So like Portal 2 here at 1080p, I got a steady 60 FPS and it can run newer games as long as the requirements are incredibly low. And I really mean that incredibly low with 1080p is about as high as you'd ever want to take this thing. When it comes to power draw at idle, this thing just sips power at around about 10 watts. And in games, I recorded it at 23 watts and the highest I ever managed to get it to was 30 watts. And impressively, regardless of what the mini PC was doing, it kept quiet the whole time. Like at no point was the fan noise ever noticeable. So overall, what do I think? Well, the word that comes to mind is pragmatic. And think for the price, this PC is incredible value. The design is thoughtful, they give you all the ports you would realistically ever need, and the RAM and storage is perfect for its intended usage, which is office work and lightweight tasks. 
and you do have the option to upgrade down the line if you want to, but for $200, I don't think you can go wrong. And like I said, if you need an office PC, a work from home PC, this will do it. This is really good. If you wanted to build like an emulation station, this would be great for that as well. As long as you're playing like PS2 games and below, I don't think this could cope with PS3 or Xbox 360. I'll put some links in the description if you want to pick one of these up. And thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one.